Değerli misafirler, dostlar, teşekkür ederim Ferhat Bey'e. İzninizle çıkışımızı sizlerle beraber salamlamamızı bizim sizlerle bölüşme için İngilizce etmek istiyorum. Mr. Chairman, estimate uh, ambassadors, distinguished participants, dear members of the press, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me address your today as opening of the seminar entitled The Countries of the South, Caucasus and Central Asia in the context of the Silk Road economic belt. On this occasion, I'd like to congratulate Center for Strategic Studies under the President of Azerbaijan and for organizing such an important and timely meeting. Thus, we are really grateful to him uh, for another reasons. Tomorrow, uh, as you know, we also host uh, an uh, official research, strategic research center, Azerbaijan, the false, uh, host the first meeting among the official foreign policy centers among the member states uh, of the Cooperation Council of Turkic speak states. Uh, at this meeting, the representative of other Brazil countries will be also present. At the end of it, the heads of the centers of our member states will sign a memorandum of understanding to depend the areas of cooperation among them with regard to the researches our own foreign policy areas. Then, this cooperation process will be open to other relevant partners for sure. Again, for uh, I'd like to thank once again for hosting tomorrow the first meeting such an important initiative for the Council. Ladies and gentlemen, Eurasia also is it's a passing through challenging periods. Nobody has offered a wide range of opportunities throughout the history. Especially the traditional Silk Road constitute the backbone for trade, cultural and human relations in and beyond the region during more than five centuries. Even if it lost its impact for various reasons for a while, the traditional Silk Road with all its capillary routes never fully lost its charm and significant connecting cont continents and several sub-regions. And today, the traditional Silk Road has entered in a crucial transformation period with modernized infrastructure projects and new multimodal integrated transport facilities. This is a historical step for regaining its attractiveness and popularity in economic and political terms. As a Turkey Council, established with the signing of an Axiom Agreement by the heads of state of Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Turkey in 2009, we are fully aware of the opportunities as well as challenge lying along the Silk Road. Dear guests, the mechanisms of cooperation within the Turkey Council with regard to transportation and customs service are designed in a format to overcome the existing challenge to render the Silk Road with the Caspian Crossing again as a main route for trade, cultural and human relations in Eurasia. Thus, as an observer to the ECHO, we are in close contact with relevant region, uh, regional and international organizations, including OCCA, European Union, UNDP, to this end. While we are cooperation with the UNICEF, we have just inking and uh, memorandum of understanding with the World Customers Organization two months ago. In addition to this, we also would like to revitalize the Silk Road destination to turn it into an attractive. To this, we also would like to uh, popular tourism brand. Accordingly, we will be, uh, be signing a memorandum of understanding for cooperation with the United National World Tourism uh, Organization next month. This is only a short insight about what we are doing to contribute in seizing the tremendous economic potential of the Silk Road. As a comprehensive and inclusive regional organization, we repeat the same motto while taking all the, these steps. We should combine our synergies for a Eurasia and a world with more peace, security and prosperity. Thus, we keep on working in this direction. Distinguished participants, the following panels that we will have today on strengthening 
the regional political cooperation to address the challenges facing in the realization of the Silk Road economic belt, and bringing a broader action-oriented perspective to the cooperation in Eurasia. Because I personally be uh, believe that action speaks louder than words. I am confident that implementation of such an approach in a harmonized way among all stakeholders in the region will provide us with collective gains rather than collective pains. While concluding my short remarks, I'd like to extend once again my congratulations to the organizers of this meeting and all participants who accept uh, the great invitation uh, from Syed Azerbaijan and uh, participate here. I wish a great success, everybody. Thanks you very much.